Welcome to another video, how to rotate objects in Katia V5. As you can see, this is considered to be a top search. So let's get started with that. I'm going to define a new part. And we're going to discuss all the rotation aspects regarding Katia. So the first one will be rotation within the viewport. If I'm going to press down the middle mouse button and afterwards the right, right click, I have the possibility to rotate around the viewport. As you can see, the reference planes will be rotated as I drag the mouse within this, let's say, circle. And also the compass will indicate the rotation of the alignment. We can also do a manual rotation by going on the bottom for the rotate tool. And afterwards, I can just left click and drag and I can rotate around the component. So that's rotating around the viewport. Now let's discuss the other rotations within Katia V5. So I'm going to go within a, a sketch, X and Y sketch. And over here I will define a rectangle. I will go for set, center rectangle within the origin. And at the top on insert operation transformation, we're going to see another rotate feature. So this allows us to rotate sketches. As you can see, we need to select the geometry to be rotated. In this case, I will do a rectangle select to grab that rectangle. Afterwards, I need to specify the center of rotation and the po another point that will define the reference line for the angle. I will choose a vertical point over here at 30 millimeters on the vertical axis. And as soon as I click that, now if I will move my mouse within the viewport, I have the possibility to rotate that sketch. As you can see, this is currently set to step mode. So if I will move my mouse over here slightly, it will jump between 10 degrees or 5 in this case. If you want a specific value, we can hit over here, for example, 75. I will press tab. Let's see, 75. Afterwards, I will press tab, afterwards enter. And we are going to have that sketch rotated at 75 degrees. So that's rotating sketches. I'm going to do an undo to go back over here. And we're going to go to the following rotation that will be for parts. So I'm going to exit this workbench, uh, the sketcher, and I will define a pad, a 20 millimeter pad for that sketch. Now, if I'm going to go at the top on insert, we're going to have again the transformation and rotation. We are going to be notified by the software. So do you really want to keep the transformation specifications? If you do not want to move your geometry using the compass or 3D constraints. So those are the default rotation, let's say options within Katia V5. But if you really want to keep um, your transformation, you can use this rotation feature within part design. So I'm going to click OK. And we're going to see that for the rotate definition, we have the possibility to go with axis angle, axis on and two elements and three points. I'm going to choose the first one, so axis and angle for our case study part. I will select this axis and I will add the angle to be 90 degrees. And if I will press tab, we're going to see that within the preview, our part will be rotated 90 degrees. So if I will click OK, this will be the final, let's say, position of that 90 degrees rotation. Now. If we don't want to use this uh, rotate as a software indicated, it's best, let's say, a good practice to use the compass over here. So I will have this rotation deleted, have the part within the default position, and we're going to make use of the compass in order to rotate the component now. We can drag and drop the compass and position it on a surface, or we can right click on that red point and we can choose snap automatically to selected objects. That means that I can just select this component and we're going to have that compass directly within the center of that surface, no matter what the surface of the part is selected. So it will go over here on that uh, top face. And we can go within right click, edit, 
and have the possibility to add specific values over here. For example, I want this to be rotated around the x-axis, 75 degrees. I will click apply and we're gonna see that our preview rotated part will appear. But we're gonna have a warning. So move sketches are based on reference plane. Our initial sketch was positioned within the X and Y plane and that will be moved. So that means that the sketch will need to have that constraint uh, deleted. So do you want to make them free? I'm gonna click on OK. And we're gonna see this will be that new position. If I will double click on the sketch, we're gonna see that the sketch will no longer be positioned within the reference of the part. We can also use this compass in order to rotate the part directly within the viewport using the left click and drag and drop on various axes. So this is again rotation, rotation on the other axis. We can also have translation directly on those lines. And we can also make use of increments. Over here we see at the bottom rotation increments. So it's currently set to five degrees. And I can have this rotated incremental by clicking on those. So this will be the along U, U axis. This will be along V axis and along W. We can also add different values. We can go even with smaller rotation. As you can see, this will slightly rotate the part. So if you want to center something and fine tune it, you can make use of this increment rotation. Okay, now regarding the rotation of components, I'm going to have this part added within an assembly. So I will go to start mechanical design, assembly design. I'm going to minimize this and the component that we just rotated, I'm going to drag and drop that within this product. I'm going to do that twice, so you're going to have two components. Afterwards, I will maximize this viewport. And as we can see, we are currently within assembly design. And over here, we have the possibility to manipulate the objects using the manipulation tool. So we can select the axis. We see the X axis is oriented like this. That means that our part will be able to slide on that axis. If you want to choose another axis, again, we can select that and move it, or we can use the final one, which is drag along any axis. That will first ask us to select that axis, and afterwards we're going to see how it will slide exactly on that. Over here within assembly design, we can make use of the compass, just like within part design. So we can have this translated, rotated on any axis. If I will rotate it like this, we're going to see that it will have a five degree snapping incremental angle between those. If you want specific values, you can go again, right click, edit, and you can add them either directly over here. For example, I will put this at zero, zero, zero. And you're going to see how that will be aligned and we can specify exactly for example 45 on the x-axis and we're going to have that rotated now there are some other rotations features within katia so i'm going to go over here within start and i will swap the workbench to imagine a shape workbench but as we can see this was currently done within assembly design so i'm going to go within product one insert a new part. I will double click on part two and we're gonna have imagine a shape open within this new part. And I will create a cube. And within imagine a shape, we're gonna make use of this tool palette ribbon. I can select all the elements of this component of this part and I can use the translation or I can use the rotation if I want to rotate this object. So this only works with features within the Imagine and Shape uh, workbench. So I won't be able to use a tool palette to rotate 
extrude the elements like um, the ones that we discussed earlier. And we also have the possibility to rotate other file formats. For example, if I will define a new part again, so I will go over here within the product, insert new part, and within this newly defined part, I will swap the workbench to digital shape editor and I will have an STL file imported. So this will be a copper key, a 3D scan of a copper key. We see that currently this is hidden because it is under the newly, let's say, previous defined cube. So I'm going to have that moved. By going back over here, I will put the compass over there and I will have this cube moved in order to visualize that key that we just added. I'm going to also move this and we have this STL file. So this is a mesh. If I'm going to go over here and uh, I'm going to check the wireframe model. We're going to see that this will be tessellated. So that means we're going to have vertices and those will be joined with triangles and those triangles will form the final surface. So those are different than the one that we modeled, but regarding their rotational alignment within the viewport, we can use the same compass workflow. So if I'm going to go over here, snap automatically to selected objects. Afterwards, I'm going to click on the key. I will now be able to use the same rotation workflow that we discussed previously in order to have this aligned according to, to our needs. Okay, so I hope that you find this content useful. I will position a similar video over here to the left and a subscribe button to the right. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.